What's up guys, Dr. McDangles back here with another video and welcome back to the channel. We are about to get into some more videos here upcoming and more in-person videos like this as we are getting into the expansion draft here today, guys. We are going to be giving our predictions for the upcoming expansion draft, which is tomorrow on ESPN. I am so excited for this first stream of NHL anything on ESPN for the upcoming hockey season. Let me know what you guys think down below about that. But man, this is going to be exciting. There are a lot of people here on this projected list that are available. We're going to get into it here in just a minute. If you guys are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future action, as well as hitting a like button if you guys enjoy this video. But without further ado, let's hop into the intro and we'll get right into the selections. <music> And here we are, guys. We've got all the team lists for the NHL expansion draft as the Seattle Kraken, GM'd by Ron Francis, are about to get underway. They're about to put their team together again on ESPN here this Wednesday. Super excited for this. We are on cap friendly, as I'm sure you guys have seen on a bunch of different videos throughout the YouTube of people giving their predictions here. We've got all the up-to-date lists here from all the NHL teams, all the no movement clause waived, all that good stuff. These are the projected lists of players in which are available for the Seattle Kraken to take, and we are going to get right into it here, guys, with my predictions again. This is no way what is actually going to happen. This is what I think might happen. Best players available, not only best players, but the right players available for the Seattle Kraken as they look to build a team almost reminiscent to the Vegas Golden Knights and how they made it to the Stanley Cup Final in their first year. Are we going to get a repeat of that? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. There are some crazy players available. We've got Tarasenko, Carey Price, Shea Weber. Again, there's some injuries that might be in play here as well, so we, we have to be aware of that when we are selecting our players. But, man, starting off with the Anaheim Ducks, there are a lot of big-time players here available. Getzlaff, Henrique, their cap hits are a lot, and also keep in mind we've got $81.5 million to work with. We also have to have a certain amount of contracts, certain amount of players, so we have to keep that in mind while we go through this draft. There are a lot of good players here. I think that the Seattle Kraken are looking at, they've got Sonny Milano, 25 years old. He is restricted free agent. He has a year left on his contract, which is nice. Um, I don't think they're going to go for Getzlaff or Henrique. I, I just, I don't think that's going to happen. Even though Henrique is tied up at 5'8 until 2024, I think they look on the back end here with either Hayden Fleury or Brendan Gould. I think either one of these options is a good pick. Again, restricted free agent till 2022, I think is the bonus for both of these guys. I think they might go with the older player though, since he has a little bit of experience in the NHL. Hayden Fleury, I think is gonna be the first pick. Anaheim Ducks off the board, 25 years old, 1.3 million cap hit. I think that is a great pick for the Seattle Kraken. It's only going to get better from here, but man, contract is nice. Again, maybe in a few years uh, or even at, in this year, they might look to re-sign him. Obviously, 2022 restricted free agent, so that is a bonus right there. So moving on here, we've got the Arizona Coyotes. who They just picked up Andrew Ladd for a lot of picks from the Islanders. Um, I don't know who they go for here. Honestly, contracts aren't terrible. Goligoski unrestricted free agent. I don't think they're going to go for him. Although they could maybe get him on a lower deal. Potentially, I don't know what he's looking for. Maybe he's looking for around like 3-5. Potentially, we, I, I'm not too sure. Um, Yalmerson is interesting, but he is, both these defensemen are a little bit older. Uh, Labushkin, um, he is honestly the underdog pick, I think, here for the Coyotes at 1 million unrestricted free agent 2022. So he's locked in for the next year, but I think later on in the draft, there are better choices at the defensive position. I think they're going to look to go forward from the Arizona Coyotes. Um, honestly, I could see Christian Fisher go here. That's a nice contract, 1 million, 24 years old. Um, I guess decent year last year. I don't have his stats pulled up, but he is restricted until 2022. I think that is a very good bargain right there. I think he's going to be taken off the board here. Looking at the goalies, I don't think they're going to touch Ranta. Uh, 32 years old, 4.25. I think there are better goalies that we'll get to in a minute. But Christian Fisher off the board for the Coyotes. As we look at the Boston Bruins now, 
With some interesting picks here, obviously Tuca, he's up. They could take him, but we don't know his injury issue. Is it worse than Carey Price's? Who knows? Question mark there. But $7 million cap hit, he is an unrestricted free agent who, honestly, I don't know how much he's going to want. I think on the open market, we're looking at maybe $5 million is potentially where he might go, especially with that injury and the question mark for the future. On the front end, we also have free agent David Krejci. Maybe they're able to work a deal out with him. If they sign him, maybe get that in. I don't know if they go for Taylor Hall, free agent. He might be wanting a big ticket. There are rumors out there that he might be wanting to sign with Edmonton. Go back there. I think you go for the safe pick here when it comes to contracts. Looking on the back end, Jeremy Lazan, that's a very interesting contract there. 24 years old, restricted free agent until 2022, only making eight. $850,000, that's a very nice deal. Um, Forward-wise, I mean, Sean Corrali, that's a nice deal. You would have to work out free agency with him. Um, Curtis Lazar, I I don't know if they go for him. That's a nice deal there for Centerman, 26 years old. Again, I think there are better options on the back end later in the draft. So I think that they will go in the forward position, but I don't know who it could be. I think it could be either Kashe Corrali or even Curtis Lazar. I don't know if they're going to go Kashe. They're going to have to work his deal out. He is restricted though. I don't know how much he is wanting. Maybe he wants a bridge deal. Andre Kashe. I think they go with him. Again, it's a question mark with the injuries and everything going on, but I think that that might be the safe play here as he's also restricted and they have some time to figure out his contract moving forward. Now, Buffalo Sabres forwards, they don't really have anything. Uh, honestly, I would never even consider taking Jeff Skinner, $9 million cap hit, 29 years old, just not even worth it. That is a waste of cap space. I think you look to the back end here. You've got two decent choices. Colin Miller, obviously he's tied up until 2022 at 3875, which is a hefty price, not gonna lie, but your other option is Jake McCabe, which I think either one would be good. I think you go with Colin Miller, proven solid NHL top. Uh, it's maybe top borderline top four defenseman. Definitely solid second line shutdown defenseman. I think you tie him up at 8375. I don't think that's bad at all. Now, moving on to the Calgary Flames. This is one of the biggest jumping points here. Mark Giordano. He is available. Former Norris Trophy winner. He's tied up until 2022 at 675 or 6, 6.75 mil. I don't know if you go for that. Again, I'm I'm sure there are going to be deals on the table that they might have some trade offers for the Seattle Kraken, maybe some picks to not take him. I don't know if that's going to be the case, but I don't think they jump on that. I don't think they hop on the Milan Lucic uh, bandwagon either. Um, I mean, looking at their contracts and, and players available, there really isn't anything stepping off the page here of, hey, you got to take this guy. It's an absolute steal. Plus, Giordano, 37 years old. Is he going to be, how long is he actually going to be in Seattle if they were to take him? I don't know. Man, it's really tough. This decision, uh, I mean, I, I, I really don't know. Um, I mean, Dominic Simone, I know he played a few, I think it was a year with the Penguins. He looked pretty decent with them. You've got Derek Ryan uh, at 3 1 2 5. I don't think you take that. Defense, um, I don't know. Honestly, Petrovic, uh, Nesterov. Honestly, Nesterov wouldn't be bad, but I think you might go for a younger defenseman, uh, Oliver, Oliver Killington. I think that's the move here. I just I don't think they're going to be going for Giordano, and the forward core for the Flames just really isn't there. Honestly, this is a wash pick. If they take Giordano, good for them, but uh, I think they could use the cap space elsewhere. Now, looking at... The Carolina Hurricanes is where we start looking at, okay, do we take somebody big here with the cap? Because one, Francis knows this team inside and out. He knows who he wants to take, but also what are the Carolina Hurricanes willing to give up? Again, we've got two goalies out there, uh, unrestricted free agents. I think they stay away from them. We know that they're not proven playoff performers as well as injury ridden with Reimer and Mrazek. Do you take Dougie Hamilton, an unrestricted free agent, work out a contract for him? That's that's a question mark that's up in the air. Do you take the big contract of Nito Niederreiter, 28 years old? Didn't think that they would leave him unprotected, but do they take him? 
That's a big question mark. I think, honestly, I think they might go for him. But if they were to go on the defensive end, I think that they would go for Dougie Hamilton. But I think they're going to use the cap space elsewhere for the forward. I think they're going to go for defensemen. And I honestly think they're going to go for Dougie Hamilton. It would be an absolute steal. Again, unrestricted free agent. They'd have to work out that contract. But I think that they're going to find a way to get that done for him. So, again, we've already got four defensemen already picked out. But, again, there's solid defensemen at that now. Looking at the Chicago Blackhawks, there are some interesting choices here of players. You could go some older, experienced players with Connolly, Zach Smith, or Carpenter. Even on the back end here, we're looking at the Han, Zadaroff. I mean, those are pretty interesting choices you could pick up there. Honestly, a very interesting one here is Malcolm Subban. Solid contract, unrestricted free agent 2022. They could lock him up. He's already locked up for an extra year, but... You have Henestroza or Adam Gaudet. I think restricted free agent Gaudet. I think that is the way they're going to go here. Get a solid young centerman, restricted free agent for them to try and sign. I think that is an absolute bargain of a deal. We also have to keep in mind contracts 2021, 2022. We have to keep that in mind. Moving forward now, with the Colorado Avalanche. We've got some big choices here. Uh, honestly, you've got Landeskog, Saad, unrestricted free agents, but I think they might be looking more towards Don Scoy or JT Comfort here. Um, I mean, you could go potentially with Eric Johnson. I just, I don't think that's the play here. Um, it's tough. You got Jason Megna down there. That could be a nice little steal. He is pretty old, uh, 31 years old, but I think the, the move here for the Avalanche, I think they're going to go for comfort, 30 uh, th or 3.5 mil uh, unrestricted free agent until 2023. I think they pull him up, put him on the board, and that is another solid player. So we've got plenty of wingers. We need centermen, and this is where we start taking a look here at some centermen here. We've got Grigorenko or Max Domi, and this is an interesting one. Domi, really unproven, don't really know if he is a top two centerman in the league with like first line second line we just don't know uh defense you, you really got nothing here to choose from i think in this instance you, i think you go for domi again a 5-3 hit on the cap which is pretty pricey but 26 years old give him a chance see what he can do i like the way he plays when he's on he is on but we haven't seen that in a while so we're going to give him a shot max domi to the seattle kraken i think that would be very interesting we got some more interesting picks here We've got Bishop on the board. This is one of the picks that I was torn between either him or Carey Price on who they actually decide. And I think they go for their goalie, Ben Bishop. He hasn't played in a year. That is the very suspect thing that we've got moving forward. But I think that they take Ben Bishop here, putting him on the team. He's their starting goalie. I know there's some other picks out here. We've got uh, Sakara. We've got Blake Komu. Um... On the front end, they really don't have anything much. I mean, Jamie Alexiak might be nice. Uh, 28 years old, big defenseman. But I think this is the play here for the goalie, Ben Bishop. I know everyone's like, well, Carey Price is out there. I think this is the better deal, Ben Bishop. He's 34 years old. He's a proven goalie in the league. Uh, I think four-time Vesna nominee. So you can't really pass up on that, especially at that cap hit until 2023. Who knows if he'll play that long at that age. But I think for a season off, Bishop will be fresh, back, ready to go for the Seattle Kraken. As we move on to the Detroit Red Wings, we've got a couple interesting picks here we could make. we got Troy Stretcher, uh, or Stetcher. We've got uh, Nemestikov would be an interesting pick at $2 million, which is a very good deal. Um, I don't think they take any of these older forwards. Um, I just I don't see that happening. Could take Evgeny Svechnikov, a restricted free agent. They'd have to work a deal out for him. Um, honestly, this one is a toss-up. Nemestikov would be a nice steal. But I think they're going to go with the solid uh, pick on defense with a stretcher. Um, or Stetcher, 27 years old, 1.7 million. He's unrestricted until 2022. I think they go with that. As we take a look at Edmonton, no defense. I don't think they're going to take... Goalies, they're staying away from those contracts. Clefbaum, I think, would be the only one I would maybe consider taking, but just injury-ridden. We don't know 
too much if he's going to be able to bounce back from all the injuries he's had over his career, which makes us look at the forwards. Do you take a proven veteran of Kyle Turris? That's the question to be seen. Do you take Devin Shore, a younger type player? It's really hard to decide on this one. Do you take a younger player, Dominic Cahoon? Again, we have to keep in mind of the contracts here in this year. I think they go with Kyle Torres, uh, centerman. Again, a little bit older, but that's a nice 1.65 cap hit to their roster. I think that's great. Um, again, they could go defensive side of things. They might. I could see them go for... Uh, honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if they go for Clefbaum and give him a chance, but we're going with Kyle Torres for our pick. Now, here... Florida Panthers, very interesting here. We've got Frank Vitrano, solid player. He played great last year. Um, you got Noel Achari, proven, proven player, um, knows how to get the puck in the back of the net. On the defensive side of things, Nutavara, I think, would be an interesting pick. Um, I think that would be the only defenseman I would see them even considering because Montour going to have to work out a contract for him. I think this is where you go for a backup goalie, Drieger. He had a solid year last year. I think they're going to go for him. And we're moving on to the next pick, which I think this is a toss-up for the LA Kings pick. I don't think they're going Jay Quick, 5.8 mil cap hit. That's just not it. This, I think you need some grit on the wing, and the player you need is Brendan Lemieux. Again, unproven when it comes to goal scoring and, and point getting. Hasn't been too great in that department, but he's a gritty winger, gritty player, and I think he would bring a lot to the table for Seattle. I think they go for him. They bring him in. Solid second, third line winger. Now, taking a look here for the Minnesota Wild, we got a few different choices, I think, up the middle in which they need to solidify, either being Victor Rask or Nick Bukestad. I think the contract of Rask might be a little too high for them where they're wanting to go different areas later on in this draft. Uh, you, I could even see them going for uh, Kekkonen or however the heck you say his name. That would be an absolute steal as he is a restricted free agent. That could be their third goalie. But I think they're going to shore up their center ice with a veteran type-ish player. And they're going to go, I think, Nick Bukestad. Again, 29 years old, a little bit older, but at $2.05 million. Until 2022, I think that's a solid third, fourth line centerman that they could really use on their team. As we take a look at the Montreal Canadiens, we've got, obviously, Carey Price, 10 mil cap hit. We already got Ben Bishop. We don't need a goalie. This is where we look at defense. Do you take Shea Weber? There's word out there that he's injured and he's not coming back for a while. I don't know if they're going to bite the bullet on that. You've got Jonathan Duran. That is a solid contract at $5.5 million. Unrestricted until 2023. Are they willing to go with that for Duran? Honestly, I could see it. I wouldn't be shocked. Paul Byron is another interesting pick that I could see after his playoff performances. That would be pretty good. Kale Fleury is another interesting pick I could see as a dark horse from the Montreal Canadiens, but I don't know if they're going to pull the trigger on that specifically. I think it's a toss-up between Weber or Drew Ann here. Just looking at our defense versus forwards, I don't know if they're going to pull the trigger on that contract again until 2026. He's at 7-8. He's already 35 by the time that rolls around. I mean, we're looking at close to 40-year-old Shea Weber making $7.8 million. I don't even think he'd finish out his career in Seattle. I think the safer bet here is to go with Jonathan Drew Ann. 2023, he might want a big payday when his deal is up, but I think that is a solid pick as a first, second line winger, which we'll also take a look at here very shortly with somebody who he might be paired with as we get down first to the Nashville Predators. And this is another position where you can look to shore up your center ice with some solid play. Again, we're at the, the defense side of things, I think we're good right now. Um, I don't see them going for Benning or Gerbranson. I don't see that. Uh, Rene, we know he retired. And we've got some choices here in center ice. Duchesne, Johansson, Mikhail Grandlin. At this point, it's who are you willing to give the money to? It's tough. Duchesne, Johansson, or Johansson, Grandlin. Grandlin, obviously, one of the uh, smaller forward. Don't know if he's, he's what you want as a top-line centerman. 
another interesting person would be Kelly Youngkroke, uh, 29 years old left winger, but I think we're pretty good right now at wing. With these choices up front in the middle, it's really hard to decide. It could be a toss-up, I think, with either one of these guys. I think unrestricted Granlin might be wanting a little bit more money, and I think you might want to tie up one of these two guys at that 8 mil cap hit. Again, one's till 2025 with Johan Johansson, or Johansson, and then one is until 2026 with Matt Duchesne. I think... Ah, man, it's tough. I think you go Duchesne here. I think you bring him into Seattle. Again, a big cap hit, but I think that's the, that's the play here. As the Devils, this is where it gets a little interesting here. I think we go away from the forwards, although that Andreas Johansson pick would be really nice. I think you look at one of these younger defensemen, either Will Butcher or Ryan Murray. I think they go with Butcher unrestricted until 2022. I think that's the pick here. I think it's a solid pick on the back end. And we're already almost finished with our defense. We've already got six out of our nine picked. We got forwards almost shored up as we are getting down to it here. Now, this is another big position forward wise. You've got some choices here. You can go pricey with Eberly. That could be good. We, we know he's proven in the playoffs. He's a clutch performer. Josh Bailey, kind of quiet in the regular season, more of an assist type player. Um, Leo Komarov, he's, he would be your grit, but at $3 million, are you willing to give that much to a gritty type player? Casey Zizekas, we already have a depth uh, forward or, or depth centerman in Bukestad being able to shore things up there. Ah, man, Richard Panic, they just got, or Panik, as they just got him from Detroit. Uh, it's really tough to say. I think you might shovel out the cash here uh, for Jordan Emberley uh, as, as a winger. I think you throw that out there, and we're getting pretty close to that cap hit. we got to save some money here for one player coming up soon. But on to the Rangers. I think they stay away uh, from D'Angelo. I don't think they're, they're even going to consider bringing him in as he's just a locker room issue. Um, you could maybe go Barkley Goodrow. He's been playing really well for the Tampa Bay Lightning as they just got him. Um, I think the play here would be Colin Blackwell, solid performer, solid depth forward. I think he's great, 28 years old at that cap hit. I think that is a huge save here for this pick as we are getting closer to the St. Louis Blues, which I'm sure you know who we are probably going to select as I allude to that. But Ottawa Senators, we've got some interesting things out here right now. Defense. Joshua Brown, is he really worth it? I don't think so. 27 years old. I think they look more towards the forward position. Chris Tierney is interesting at 3-5. I think that would be a nice little steal. Um, especially 2022. I, I just I don't know where they go for their pick here. It's really tough to say. Um and it's it's really a toss-up. I could see Tierney, I could see Dezingle. Um, unrestricted free agent, be able to work out his contract easily. Um, man, I'd say let's go Tierney. Um, solid centerman. We are getting closer and closer to that cap, so we got to be very conscious of who we're picking now as we are getting down to defense. And I think you need some grit now on the back end when it comes to defense. And I think Justin Braun would be solid. Again, older type defenseman might be a little bit slower, but he is scrappy. He is solid. We could either go with him or uh, Robert Haig, a little bit younger. I think that might be the better play here because we could get a grittier defenseman down the line. So we'll go Robert Haig. For defense from the Philadelphia Flyers. Looking at the Pittsburgh Penguins here, they've got some options. Obviously, Pedersen, uh, I mean, four mil, are they really going to go for that? They've got Jason Zucker, are they really going to go for that? I don't think they are. I think they're going to look further down the draft for somebody better uh, on the wing, which again, we're, we're getting closer and closer to that. Um, Zach Aston Reese, honestly, I could see that as a good play. For them, obviously, they would have to re-sign him. Restricted free agent, I think that plays very well. But we also have Casey DeSmith, um, 29 years old. I don't think they bring him in. I think they're going to go Zach Aston Reese here from the Pittsburgh Penguins again. They'll be able to restructure his deal pretty easily. Uh, San Jose Sharks, uh, it's tough. I don't think they're going to ever even consider Martin Jones as a pick here. Um, Ryan Donato, I think, would be a nice steal. Restricted free agent. You'd be able to work out a deal for him. Uh, but I think you might go a little bit younger by a year and an easier cap hit. Dylan Gramble, solid prospect. I think he's a solid player. 
or you could even bring in Matt Nieto. I think either one of those guys, but I think they go the younger route, restricted free agent as well, Dylan Gramble. I think that would be a solid pick for the Seattle Kraken as we are now at the St. Louis Blues, guys. And this is where they're throwing the cap at them. They're going for Tarasenko. I don't care what anyone says. If they pick otherwise, I think it's a mistake. Tarasenko, great forward. I think they're going to go for it. And right now, we're we're stacked. We're good for forwards. We're 16 out of 14. We got enough. We're good. We got to figure out goalies and defense. And I think we can do the rest here with the picks, which we could maybe swap somebody out earlier in the draft because Tampa Bay's got a lot of nice forwards here. Uh, but I don't think they're going to go for that. I think they're going to go for the younger Cal Foot here. Again, hasn't really had his chance with the Tampa Bay Lightning. The first round draft pick, they drafted him really high. He just hasn't had a chance to break in. 22 years old, he hasn't had a chance. Restricted free agent, I think you could get him on a really solid deal and bring him in and develop him nicely to be one of your top defensemen in like three, four years. At a solid deal. And we're sitting at seven... 76.5 mil with only a few players left to grab. Now, looking at Toronto. This is interesting. I think this would be a steal. I know you've got Kerfoot. You've got Jared McCann. You've got Simmons. You've got uh, a bunch of other guys on there that you could go after. But I think the pick here, restricted free agent Travis Dermott. I think you get him out of Toronto. You give him a Chelsea a chance elsewhere and I think he's going to make dividends. He's he's going he's going he's going to pay off great. It's it's a, going to be a great deal again restricted free agent 2023 so you have him for two additional years. Proven defenseman again looked a little sketch in the playoffs this past year but he'll get over that. He'll work well with the Seattle crack and I think that's who they take. Uh we're looking at Vancouver. They've got Holpe. Do you really go for Holpe at 4.3? I don't think so. Um, again, we're really needing one goalie, and uh, I'm taking a look. I think you go further down, um, it's it's tough to decide because we also have contracts already set. Maybe they go for a goalie later, earlier in the draft, uh, such as Minnesota. They go for the, the young kid, um, Kekkonen or Kukkonen. I forget his name off the top of my head. But looking here, um, it, it's tough to decide because you got a couple decent – uh, pieces up front, Antoine Roussel, uh, Vertanen, Jay Beagle. I mean, a couple pricier pricier contracts there on the front end. Uh, but I think you go with Madison Bowie here. Uh, solid deal, 26 years old, unrestricted free agent. Solid pickup there. Um, and then I think you even add another defenseman here from the Capitals. I mean, you've got a solid deal with uh, Hathaway there, 29 years old. Um, I, I like Connor Sheary's deal. He did have a solid year last year with the Capitals. Um, I think, oh man, I didn't, I totally forgot Dylan's contract was pretty pricey uh, at 3.9, unrestricted in 2024. So I think maybe you stay away from him. And I think Sheary, it would be a solid pick here. Solid depth forward, could really use him. And we're getting pretty close to the cap, which here, uh, I think it's a toss up with the Jets. You've got Mason Appleton which would be a solid deal. Um, you've got, uh, where is he, DeMello, solid deal, $3 million. You've got uh, Jordy Ben. You've got um, Forbert. So you've got some choices here. I don't know if they go with the goalie here. I think you go Appleton. And I think where we go to actually switch this, if we go back to Minnesota, I think they switch it up from Bukestad to Capo, uh, Kokkinen, I, I can't really say his name, but I think that's where you make the change from our earlier pick of Bukestad, uh, because if we then take a look at our team, if we go up here, view the team, this is what we've got, guys. This is our team, this is what we've got. Duran, again, he's on the IR, but he'll be back, uh, definitely worth it. We've got Duchesne, Domi, Tierney, you, Comfort could play center, Kyle Turris could play center, Gramble, I mean, that's solid there. We got Eberly, we've got Tarasenko, you got Comfort, Lemieux, Sheary, Fisher, Appleton, Blackwell, Zach Aston Reeves, Kasha, I mean, Goddard. You've got a solid upfront team, which, again, we got a lot of contracts we'll have to work out eventually. But on the back end, you've got 
I think your top defenseman here being Dougie Hamilton. He's your top go-to guy. You could Colin Miller, Will Butcher, Troy Stretcher. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of good defense here as well. Uh, again, I it looks like I went a little bit younger on the back end. But up front, I have a little bit of age there as well. Um, honestly, captain of this team, I don't know who you would put as your captain. Honestly, I think maybe Tarasenko is your captain. He wanted to be captain in St. Louis. We'll have to wait and see on that specifically. But this is the team, guys. We'll do lineups and everything once they actually draft the team on Wednesday. We'll get into that a little bit further. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comments of what you guys think of the team that I picked. If you think I'm pretty close, if you think I'm way off, what what ch what choices would you guys make? I want to know what you guys have to say down below in the comments. But it, that is actually going to be it for today's episode, guys. If you did enjoy it, be sure to drop a thumbs up on this video. I hope you guys have a good one. And as always, stay dusty.